Hello and welcome to another episode of Foodie Friday. This week I am not going to be making a food treat. We are going to be repurposing something that food comes packaged in. We're going to make milk jug sugar skulls. I'm going to show you how to make a basic black and white sugar skull. No cutting, cutting required on the carton. Um, this is out of an empty milk jug, and as you can see, the milk jug I used had a circle on one side. Some milk jugs don't have one of those. Either kind you have is fine. In fact, if you don't have a milk jug, but you have something else similar, even though this isn't quite a skull shape the way that a milk jug is, you can still use something like this. This was from vinegar. Um, and I took the labels off, so whatever kind of jug you are using, make sure to take the labels off first. There's some great instructions out there on how to do it, but the easiest way is to just rinse clean the milk jug, fill it with warm water, let it sit for a little while on its side or wherever the labels are, so fill it to make sure that you are above where those labels are, and after a little while, just peel the labels off. It's okay if there's still a little bit of sticky residue left. No big deal on that. You can wipe it away with some baking soda and water and dish soap, or you can just leave it. I have a little label left on there. It doesn't even matter. So let's get started. You are going to need an empty, clean milk jug. I'm going to use a small yogurt cup today as well as one of the markers for where I'll place one of those eyes. Since my milk jug only has one depression there for one eye, I will use the yogurt cup on the other side to trace so that I can get a second eye there. I'm also using a template of a sugar skull here. Um, I'm just using this as a guide. So I'm going to be looking at it to get inspiration for what kind of designs I will draw on my milk jug with a permanent marker. I'm going to use a Sharpie today. This one's a thick permanent marker. Whichever you have is fine. You may also like to use a pencil first to draw your designs onto your milk jug um, before you use the permanent marker. A pencil actually shows up just fine. It may not erase quite that well, but you could wash it away with some soap and water after you have made your permanent marks with your permanent marker. If you happen to have colored Sharpies, got some here, then maybe you'd like to make a more colorful milk jug like the one behind me here. Um, this one even has a little votive candle in the back, so when you're all done decorating, you could cut out carefully a small space in the back, leaving the bottom, put a little battery-operated votive candle in there, and you have a light-up skull. The one we're making today is going to be black and white, and I might also, if anything else I would need, it might be tape, tape and scissors for any other kinds of decorations or designs. So, I have my milk jug all rinsed out, and um, it's still wet inside, so it could dry on the inside another time, but it's not wet on the outside. It is dry on the outside. And I'm going to start with the eye. This one, as I mentioned, already has a depression there for the first eye, so I'm just going to actually use that. And I'll trace it around. There's my eye. Now I'm going to use that milk, uh, sorry, yogurt cup on the other side, just to sort of gauge where that eye would go. And I'll lay it down on its side so that I get it nice and stable. I'll go ahead and trace around that little yogurt cup. It's just about the same size as the other hole, but it doesn't really matter if they're exactly the same. It's pretty close though, so that comes pretty close to being exactly the same. Now I get to start with the, the rest of the face. So for the nose, I like to kind of gauge where that would be. Here's the eyes. I think the nose would be probably about right there. And I'm gonna use an upside down heart. If you don't know how to draw a heart, again, you can use your template as a guide. This one doesn't have a heart as a nose, but almost. It's got two pieces there. Um, you could use that as a guide, or you could cut out some paper templates. This one's a little big, but that could be a nice big heart nose there upside down. Here's a smaller one, and I just use regular paper and cut out a little heart, and you could trace that on there. I'm going to go ahead and put my free hand so 
I put my little heart nose here. There's a line in the middle of the bottle to kind of help guide where that heart is going to go. And I'm just going to get my basic designs on there. I can go back in later and trace to get it exactly how I want it. There's the nose. How about the mouth? Let's see. I'm going to start with just a line. Let's see about just a line. Before I get into any other detail on the mouth, let's just go for a line. There is a line here on my milk jug to kind of help me see where that's going to go. I want mine to be kind of a smile, so I'm going to start it here, and then I'll start again over here on the other side, and I'll just sort of make a smile to make those two meet, a little curve there, and I'll go to the middle. I've just gone to the middle, and then I'll meet those from the other side. That way I can get pretty close to a good, exact smile there. It's not totally straight, but that's totally, that's totally fine. I love it. All right, so there's my smile. I'll stay there for now. I want some decorations. This, this sugar skull is really, really intricate, so I'll probably put some decorations up here, but I definitely want something going on in the eyes. This one has plain eyes, but that's probably because you could cut this out to make it a mask. I want my eyes to have some decoration in there, so I'm going to put some flowers. I'll just go ahead for a little middle of the flower. I'll do each one the same, and I'll do them pretty much at the same time so they end up being just alike. And I'll start with two petals right there, and I'll do the same thing on this eye. And when you start out with just a couple, you can get them looking almost exactly the same on both sides. There we go. And then I'll go over here. Alright, and a few more petals to fill it out. Four more on each eye. There we go on that one. Alrighty, there's my eyes. Now I want to finish off that mouth here, and if you notice on the others, Kind of a bubbly mouth here. I've got sort of a full smile with some missing teeth on that one. I'm gonna do the bubbly mouth on this one. Since I started with my smile, it's kind of easy. I'm just gonna go and make tick marks here for the teeth all along the smile, right to the middle. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, and now I'll just go for those bubbles, and we're just making the tick marks meet. Each one, keep going along, and at the end, you'll end up with some nice bubbly teeth. And do the same thing on the bottom row. You can finish off the edge there and kind of make it its own little bubble. You can finish off that bottom row, and when you're all done, you'll have something that looks more like this. You can put in those final details, get some really nice designs all around. Use your template as a guide when you're all done. Go in and just um, trace over with your Sharpie to fix any little lines that you don't like or make them more bold or any little mistakes you might have had in there. You can fix them up with your Sharpies. If you're going to use color, be aware that as you work, even though these are permanent markers, a little bit of color will come off on your fingers. So just be careful as you go. And you can really fill it in with some nice color if you want to. It shows up nicely with the light behind it. Another option instead of drawing freehand is find a template that will fit on top of your bottle. Here's that vinegar bottle again. I found another template. There's lots of them available in coloring books or online. Search safely for one that is safe to download and print at home. Um, you can find one that'll fit on your bottle, cut it out, and then you can tape it to the bottle. This is a little Pop El Picado. You can see the paper cutouts behind me. Well, I used the template there and I cut out my Pop El Picado with it, and this is the leftover template. 
So all the shapes are cut out. I've taped it to my bottle and I've gone ahead and traced that template. I'll show you what it looks like when we remove it. There's only a couple of lines for me to fill in once I've removed the template. It should be pretty easy to do there. All right, so I went ahead and traced all those little holes and the cut marks that I made. I made a little mistake up there, no big deal. I'm gonna go back in later and fix that with my marker, with my permanent marker. But I'll just connect those little places where the tape was holding in. And then I can have a nice sugar skull drawn on my bottle. Now I'll go ahead and color it all in. Well, I hope that you enjoy making sugar skulls. Um, for our Foodie Friday, Dia de los Muertos is coming up right around the corner. It usually starts on November 1st and follows into November 2nd. That's Saturday, I'm sorry, that's Sunday and Monday of next week, right after Halloween. Learn more about Dia de los Muertos from books from the library. You can find some on Hoopla and Overdrive as well. If you like to use our digital services, you can find lots of information on Dia de los Muertos there. And lots more craft ideas too. Try some papel picado. It is a beautiful holiday to remember those who have passed and lots of lovely decoration, decorations that we can make to help us celebrate. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.